Hotep, how's everybody doing tonight? All right, how's everybody doing? Hotep, how's everybody doing tonight? All right, it is Wednesday, uh, August 28th, 2019, and we are live. Hope everybody's doing well. So I want uh, everybody to share this broadcast on your Facebook page, invite your friends to tune in also. Uh, I wanted to talk about this topic uh, actually yesterday. And it's been so hectic, I haven't uh, been able to broadcast. And uh, today was screwed up also. I was trying to uh, wonder broadcast earlier but uh, wasn't able to do so. So a lot of you saw this article that I posted from blackamericaweb.com dealing with uh, an Illinois prison banned books on black history and empowerment from inmate program. Okay, so a lot of people, uh, so I posted the article twice. And I first saw the article at uh, blackamericaweb.com, blackamericaweb.com. Um, so a lot of people commented on this article. And one of the things that delayed me in doing the uh, broadcast is I had to do a lot of research on this story to really understand what's going on and really get... Um, some more some clarification on what's going on. So I read a number of different articles dealing with this topic, okay? So we're gonna get into this. And this is a, um, I, I've heard of something like this before, okay? Uh, where the types of books in prisons are restricted. The type of information they allow prisoners to have uh, is restricted. And with this one here, this is, with this case here, you had people, you had uh, about 202 books that were removed from a uh, prison program, okay? It's a prison educational program, and it is taught through the University of Illinois. And uh, this program is called Education uh, justice project, education justice project, and uh, prisoners can take like college credit classes uh, in prison, and there are a number of books that are used in the program. Okay, so uh, if we look just very quickly here, I'm going to reference probably three main articles, and I'm going to share with you some of the books that were. Uh, banned also, okay? Um, the article from blackamericaweb.com, uh, which was uh, from a few days ago, uh, Illinois prison banned books on black history and empowerment from inmate program. It talks about how in Illinois, three out of four inmates, three out of four inmates are African-American. Yet an Illinois prison banned an inmate education program from using books discussing black history or empowerment due to their racial content. OK, due to their racial content. And uh, let's see, let's post the information here uh, on the thread of the broadcast and uh, everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. OK. All right. So uh, according to the Chicago Tribune. Uh, officials at the Danville Correctional Center had removed 200 books from a prison library and banned, uh, removed 200 books from a prison library and banned for use in the education program. Removed were several classic books of African American history, including The Souls of Black Folks, uh, The Souls of Black Folk by Dr. W.B. Du Bois. Uh, and actually, today is the anniversary of uh, the passing of Dr. W. B. Du Bois. Okay, uh, well, actually, no, let me take that back. The twenty seventh. The day is uh, August twenty eighth, uh, two thousand nineteen. Okay, so the day is the anniversary 
of the March on Washington, which took place August 28, 1963. And Dr. W.B. Du Bois uh, passed away the day before, okay, in Ghana. He passed away on August 27th, uh, 1963. He passed away the, the day before the March on Washington. So he didn't, uh, he did not attend. All right, so, uh, so the Souls of Black Folk was banned. Uh, and then also the anti-slavery novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, okay, written by Harriet Beecher Stowe uh, in 1852. And the memoir of uh, a former slave and abolitionist, Frederick Douglass, okay? Now, Frederick Douglass wrote three autobiographies. This is uh, Frederick Douglass' first autobiography, uh, the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, okay? This is his first autobiography, and here's a copy of The Souls of Black Folk by Dr. Dr. W.B. Du Bois. So there were 202 books. I went through and I looked at a list of a number of these books that were banned, okay? Uh, now, according to records obtained by the Chicago Tribune, uh, the dispute between the Illinois Department of Corrections and the Education Justice Project run under the auspices of the University of, of Illinois. This went back months, okay? So the, the article from blackamericaweb.com, that was the first article that I saw dealing with this. It, it cited some passages from the article from the Chicago Tribune. I went and read the full article from the Chicago Tribune, which is right here. This is about uh, six pages, five pages. I read the full article from the Chicago Tribune. And then also um, I read the article from uh, Illinois.edu, okay, uh, uh, Will Radio, uh, W-I-L Radio, uh, Will Radio, uh, W Will dot illinois dot edu that's will radio okay uh, i read that full article this is about uh 10 pages okay so even though we just found out about this in the month of august in the last few days this actually took place back in january of 2019 okay that's when this actually took place so let's look at the article from uh chicago tribune this is a pretty extensive article here from chicago tribune entitled um, it's the racial stuff. It's the racial stuff. Illinois prison banned removed books on black history and empowerment from inmate, uh, inmate education program. And people are saying that the books were removed because of the racial content, uh, the racial content of the books. And, uh, some people felt the books were divisive, uh, et cetera. So, uh, officials at an Illinois uh, prison suspended an education program for inmates, launched two internal investigations and removed 200 books, removed 200 books from a prison library because many had quote unquote racial content or addressed issues like diversity and inclusion according to records records obtained by the Chicago Tribune. So this is the extensive article from the Chicago Tribune. Now, Danville Correctional Center officials also prohibited for use in the University of Illinois program several classic books from African-American history, okay? So the Black Folk, Uncle, Souls of Black Folk, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and um, a memoir from Frederick Douglass, all right? So this is a program that's taught through the University of Illinois in the Danville Correctional Prison, okay? So Danville, uh, let's see, hundreds of pages of records released by the Illinois Department of Corrections in response to Freedom of Information Act requests paint the clearest picture yet of the origins of the dispute between the Illinois Department of Correction and the Education Justice Project. And while the department's public statements about the controversy emphasized that the books had not been appropriately appropriately reviewed, internal Illinois Department of Correction emails or IDOC emails and other documents show that the program was was swiftly suspended and the books removed after the race related themes of the of some of the content were flagged 
So there's a there's a dispute about what's going on here. So as I go as I went through and read, and read these articles, you had some books. So when you have books that are being used in a program in prison, the books have to go through a review process. Okay. Uh, and, and these were books in the in a prison library also, and they're being used in these classes that are taught in the prison. So there were some books that were approved to come into the prison, but not approved, but they, they were approved to come into the prison for review to be determined if they could be used in the course or not if they could be in the library or not. So they were approved to come into the prison for review. You have others that were approved to be actually used in the course and put into the library, all right? And uh, from looking at different statements that were made, it seems that, may, it, it seems that it's possible some books kind of slipped through the cracks, but when we look at the 202 books that were removed, it's you see some constant themes in the books that were removed. They're dealing with racial issues, they're dealing with racism, they're dealing with history, African-American history. Now, the books are going through a review process now. But when you look at some of these, it's just interesting. Some of the books they took out, I'm gonna show you some of the titles of the books they took out because I went through and looked at the list. So prison officials suspended the program and removed books only after finding what were described as, quote, racially motivated cartoons, end quote, and, quote, other items of concern, end quote, including a Movement for Black Lives pamphlet, okay, Movement for Black Lives is, is uh, that is part of the overall Black Lives Matter movement, Movement for Black Lives pamphlet on Black power, freedom, and justice along with excerpts excerpts from a comic book that included sexually explicit images the records indicate now in going and looking at the guidelines of what is permissible in in prison as far as material things like this sexually explicit material sexually explicit images are not allowed that's understandable okay um, acting director of the Illinois Department of Corrections, Rob Jeffries, told uh, told lawmakers at a hearing in July 2019, quote, we acknowledge the situation could have been handled differently. We acknowledge the situation could have been handled differently. He said the situation prompted the department to hire a volunteer coordinator and make quote unquote long overdue revisions to its procedure. Now the Education Justice Project, okay, the, uh, the EJP, the Education Justice Project, uh, teaches seminars and four credit courses to inmates at the Danville Correctional Center. Now, if you watch MSNBC Lockup, okay, you hear them talk about the Danville Correctional Center. Now. Um, they have off offerings or classes ranging from calculus to intro to critical race theory in education. And the group has um, its own space and library at the prison. Okay, so the Education Justice Project. The, and this, they've been teaching classes at the Danville Correctional Center for years. All right. So they didn't just start last year. Now, the program has operated at Danville for a decade. But amid growing tension between the uh, Education Justice Project and prison officials, it was suspended for weeks and the books withheld by corrections officials for months before they were, were returned to the prison in June of 2019, the records show. Okay, how's everybody doing? Everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. Um, African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Okay, and email us at customer service at African History Network.com. Customer service at African History Network.com. 
Uh, also, if you like this type of information, you could donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, or at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. That helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, uh, keep broadcasting our Sunday night shows, uh, pay for travel expenses when I have to travel, etc. And you can also register for my uh, new online course, uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. This is an eight week, 16 hour online course that I teach dealing with thousands of years of history. This is actually going to be nine weeks because, because August 20th, 1619, uh, August 20th, 2019 just happened and, you know, we did the 400 year commemoration. And because they're new archaeological discoveries, so we, we have to do nine weeks, all right? Uh, so we just posted a link here. You can register for that. It's, reg it's regular $130 on sale, $80. We do the classes live on Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All the sessions are archived. You can go back and watch it over and over again. And um, there's about 36 hours of bonus content also as soon as you register. Are you doing Cedric, uh, Joe Ott? Uh, who else we have here? We'll go back to uh, this article. We have Janine, Kim, uh, Eric, uh, Nika. Just a few of the people watching. How's everybody doing? Okay, so let's continue here. All right, so, uh, so the Education Justice Project has been operating for a, a decade at the Danville Correctional uh, Center, okay? So the program, uh, so amid growing tensions between the Education Justice Project and prison officials, the program was suspended for weeks and the books withheld by corrections officials for months before they were returned to the prison in June of 2019, the records show. The Illinois Department of Correction did not answer questions amid the controversy from the Chicago Tribune or explain the seeming discrepancy between its public statements and the records, okay? So this article from uh, the Chicago Tribune is from August 15th, 2019. August 15th, 2019. And I, I went and read, I saw an article from the root.com. I went and looked at a number of different uh, articles, did, did like some really deep research on this story. Okay, so um, some state lawmakers also wanted answers following a report by Illinois Newsroom, a downstate public media collaboration about the book removal and three legislative committees met jointly in July 2019 to discuss the dispute. So, you know, I'm on this Black Agenda tour, Michi X and Jice Johnson and um, uh, some other people as well. And I do, uh, so we, we were in Brooklyn this past weekend, okay? So some of y'all saw the pictures that we took in Brooklyn, okay? So we were in Brooklyn and then next we are in, I think Orlando or somewhere, Orlando, Washington, DC, we're, 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 um, we're somewhere in October. Um, I, I do a presentation on the tour dealing with six principles of political self-defense, how uh, laws and policies impact the economic conditions of African Americans. And what a lot of people don't understand is the power that the state legislature has. The state legislature regulates this, uh, th these educational programs in prisons, okay? A lot of people don't understand this. Okay, so, so politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources. Politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. So when we talk about state, the state legislature, the state legislature regulates all of this, okay, largely. So you had uh, State Representative Carol Amons, A-M-M-O-N-S, who said, um, are they re in regards to the 202 books being removed? She said, quote, are they removing all black books? I was totally taken aback by the list of books and what their objection is to the books, okay? They removed books by, you know, Dr. Henry Louis Gates Jr. They removed books by Dr. Cornell West, Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington as well. There are no, I'm, I'm gonna sh show you some of the, um, some of the books uh, on the list, okay? So this, and this is not the only prison that has done something like this as well, all right? Um, so the article from uh, the Illinois Newsroom 
that they that they reference. I went and read that article. That's an extensive article also from the Illinois newsroom. I'll, sh I'll share that with you as well. That's one of the reasons why it took me so long to do this, uh, to actually get to do this broadcast because I was doing so much research on this topic. Now, at the uh, at that hearing in Chicago in July 2019, okay. Uh, let's see who is this, Jeffries. Um, okay, so uh, Jeffries didn't talk about why the books were removed, saying he didn't, quote, want to hash into it and attributed the dispute to a lack of sound process and much needed policy oversight. Now, uh, Let's see, Jeffries has only been director since Governor J.B. Pritzker, governor of Illinois, appointed him in May of 2019 and learned of the controversy in his first week on the job, according to his testimony. He told lawmakers that books addressing the African-American experience are welcome in the prison system. OK, he, he said that books addressing the African-American experience are uh, welcome in the prison system. So this is Rob Jeffries, who's the acting director of the Illinois Department of Corrections. Okay, Rob Jeffries. Now, lawmakers praised the program during the hearing, and in follow-up interviews, some said they were satisfied that the new administration will bring change. Okay. Uh, now, State Representative Kelly Cassidy, Democrat uh, representing Chicago, said. Quote, there's been pretty wholesale that there has there's been pretty wholesale change at the department and the new leadership has made clear this is their intention to dig in at every level. OK. And uh, State Representative Kelly Cassidy is one of three committee chairs to convene the uh, hearing in July 2019. All right. So uh, Huckleberry Finn was one of the books that were, that they were allowed to keep in the library. So the flap between the University of Illinois program and this Education Justice Project is a University of Illinois program, okay? So the flap between the U of I program and the Illinois Department of Correction uh, officials started in November of 2018. When uh, Education Justice Project, when the Education Justice Project began the review process for the upcoming semester's books and course materials, that's when a corrections lieutenant told program officials that the problem with the materials were they were quote racial, according to testimony by EJP Director Rebecca Ginsburg. Rebecca Ginsburg. So Rebecca Ginsburg is a is a white woman. She does a lot of work uh, with this project. She was very upset that these books were removed. All right. So the the uh, EJP library is separate from the prison library, and it follows a separate review process from reading materials sent to inmates through the prison mailroom. OK, it follows a separate review process from reading materials sent to inmates through the prison mailroom. But Rebecca Ginsburg told lawmakers the review policy has gone through seven, seven, seven revisions over the past four years. The review process for the books in the Education Justice Project has gone through seven revisions over the past four years. So in this case, Records show the EJP submitted 25 books for approval, okay? 25 books for approval. Of those 25 books, four were denied outright. Nine were allowed in for review, but then denied. Nine were allowed in for review, but then denied. Only 12 of the 25 were approved. So that's well, about uh, a little less than half. Among the books not allowed in for review, okay, was The Color of Law, A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America, okay? Now, see, see keep in mind, that as, as I said earlier, you have books that are allowed in for review, but you had four books that were denied outright that were not even allowed in for review, okay? 
So there were, so let, let me just repeat this, okay? The Education Justice Project submitted 25 books for approval. Other 25 books, four were denied outright. Nine books, they, they were not allowed to come in at all. Nine books were allowed in for review, but then denied after they were reviewed. Only 12 of the 25 books were actually approved to be used in the in the program. OK, when we look at books not allowed, that were not even allowed to come into the prison for review. One of those four books was The Color of Law, a forgotten history of how our government segregated America. Now, books denied after review. They reviewed the book, say, no, you can't use this. Books denied after review for the spring semester deal largely with race and social issues, including Uncle Tom's Cabin, which is a novel. That's, a, that's not even a real story. It's based, now, Uncle Tom's Cabin, the, the fictitious character of Uncle Tom is based upon the life of a runaway slave named Josiah Henson. Josiah Henson was a runaway slave from Maryland. And he and his family escape to freedom and they go up north and go into Canada. And he becomes a Methodist minister and an educator. And he uh, becomes an abolitionist and works on the Underground Railroad. All right. That's Josiah Henson. Now. Uh, th th so so um, so what happened was Josiah Henson wrote an autobiography about his life. Harriet Beecher Stowe read his autobiography and then she writes the novel the fictitious story of uncle tom's cabin but the character of uncle tom is based upon the the life of josiah henson the josiah henson story as a slave okay that's who the character of uncle tom is based upon even though the the story of uncle tom's cabin is a fictitious story but what the what the book did was the book came out in 1852 so the book came out two years before the Republican Party was founded in 1854. The Republican Party was founded by groups of abolitionists who were the counter to the Democratic Party. And they were founded after the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854. The Kansas-Nebraska Act dealt with westward expansion of slavery in as, as, uh, as uh, uh, Americans are going into these Western territories, okay? Uh, and, and, and a lot of these territories have not become states yet. They're territories in the Union, but they're not states yet. The Kansas-Nebraska Act left it up to the inhabitants of those territories to determine whether or not those territories would have slavery, as opposed to it being dictated to them by the federal government that the states, that those territories would have slavery, okay? So that's the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854. The Republican Party was founded as a direct backlash, as a direct result of that Kansas-Nebraska Act. Then six years after it was founded, their candidate for president becomes president-elect November 6, 1860. His name was Abraham Lincoln. And then six weeks after that, the first state to secede from the Union, North Carolina, uh, South Carolina secedes from the Union, December 20th, 1860. Okay? And then four months after that, on April 12, 1861, the, the Civil War starts in, in uh, South Carolina. All right. So we so they won't even allow Uncle Tom's Cabin. And this was a novel. But what the what the book Uncle, Uncle Tom's Cabin did was it became an international bestseller. Its first year out. And it exposed America to the horrors of slavery. And it helped to galvanize the abolitionist movement, this novel, okay? It exposed America to the horrors of slavery. All right, so, and, and, and in, the, in, in the story, Uncle Tom was really the hero, okay? He, 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 he was the slave who wouldn't tell on the other slaves who ran away. He, he was the slave who would take cotton out of his sack and put it in the sack of other slaves so they wouldn't get beaten. He was the slave who wouldn't beat black women. He was the hero, okay? So it, it, it's totally different than when people use the term Uncle Tom. A lot of it has to do with they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Don't read. That's basically what that comes down to. 
Uh, but this is another conversation. Okay, so let's continue. All right, uh, so uh, Uncle Tom's cabin, uh, it, it was uh, was not allowed as well, okay? Uh, books denied after review for the spring semester deal largely with race and social issues, including Uncle Tom's Cabin and Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. OK, that was written in the 1800s as well. Now, the 12 books granted full approval included general co collections of American literature. Uh, the uh, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, Notes on the State of Virginia and the Declaration of Independence and learning to program with Python, a, a, a computer science book. Okay, so these were allowed to come in. Um, in addition, three so-called course readers, compilations of excerpts from various sources were approved for use, but with some sections removed, okay? Uh, Rebecca Ginsburg told legislatures. So they had to remove some sections of books to allow them to come in. In addition, three so-called course readers, compilations of excerpts from various sources were allowed, what were approved for use, but with some sections removed, all right? Now, quote, it was the first time we had ever asked to literally tear pages out of course materials, Rebecca Ginsburg said. Now, around the time the course materials were denied, okay, uh, prison officials found rule violations connected to the program. The records show a printout of an email about racial disparity, okay? A printout of an email about racial disparity problems within the Education Justice Pro, uh, uh, Project uh, quote, uh, was, was found in an inmate sale, okay? The, the, this, this email about racial disparity problems within the EJP program was found in an inmate cell. Rebecca Ginsburg attempted to uh, bring, a, okay, and then Rebecca Ginsburg attempted to bring a memory card into the prison, and someone attempted to mail photos of an EJP ceremony taken from Rebecca Ginsburg's Flickr account. Uh, they attempted to mail these photos to an inmate. Now, Ginsburg told investigators she was simply bringing the memory card to the Internal Affairs Office where she's been allowed to store it in the, store it in the past. Investigators faulted her for posting photos of EJP events, though she said she had done so for years with no problem. Now, those three events prompted the warden to open an internal affairs investigation, okay? The, the, uh, these three events, the, the printout of an email uh, about racial disparity problems within the EJP program found in the inmate sale, Rebecca Ginsburg attempting to bring a memory card into the prison, and then also um, uh, the, the uh, pictures being uh, emailed. Ginsburg told investigators she was simply bringing, okay, and then uh, uh, pictures being emailed also, okay? So these three incidences caused the warden of the prison to launch an investigation, an, an internal affairs investigation. A summary included in the investigative file found Rebecca Ginsburg violated policy by posting photos from within the prison without having prison approval. That investigation was ongoing as EJP, Education Justice Project staff members, tried to bring materials into the prison for the upcoming semester on January 10th, 2019, according to records. Now, despite a December 2018 memo from an, from an assistant warden, to the prison's main gate listing, uh, to, the, to the prison's main gate, listing materials approved to be brought in on January 10th. The same assistant warden then indicated the materials needed to be screened again, saying the December memo only allowed the materials in for review, not in to be used in the program, but only allowed the materials to come into the prison 
to be reviewed to be determined whether or not they could be actually used in the program, okay? So despite a December 2018 memo from an assistant warden to the prison's main gate, listing materials approved to be brought in on January 10th, the same assistant warden then indicated the materials needed to be screened again saying the December 2018 memo only allowed the materials into the prison for review, but didn't allow the materials into the prison to be used in the education justice project and in the classes for the prisoners. Now, EJP officials dispute this, however, noting that they brought several copies of each book in for the first day of the semester, and that past reviews were done prior to the new school term starting. Whatever, whatever the case, it was during that review that prison officials say, said they found readers, quote, that contained numerous racial issues, end quote, including cartoons that were racially motivated, according to the documents. That prompted officials to check other materials already inside the EJP's resource room, okay? So they're going through this review process and they're seeing all these things they didn't know were in the materials. So then this causes them to say, well, wait a second, what's in, the, what's, what's in this library over here that they're using? So that prompted officials to check out other materials already inside the Education Justice Project re resource room, where it was discovered there were, quote, several racially motivated books, a book on the Hell's Angels and books on anime pornography, end quote, anime pornography, according to an email sent the following day by a corrections lieutenant to the warden. Now, the memo also noted the EJP handbook quote, contain an entire section about diversity and inclusion, which is an issue that is currently under investigation, end quote. Now, the same day on January 11th, 2019, the warden notified other corrections officials via email, quote, due to the events of the past few weeks, we are canceling all EJP classes, meetings, and events until further notice, end quote. So later that month, January of 2019, the warden also directed staff members to remove from the EJP resource, uh, just a second here, okay, to remove from the EJP Uh, later that month, the warden also directed staff members to remove from the EJP resource room, quote, any books, items of a controversial nature to be reviewed further, end quote. About 200 items were, moved, were, were removed, most of which had themes around race or incarceration, including Race Matters by Dr. Cornell West, Colored People, a memoir by Henry Louis Gates Jr., and my daddy is in jail, a children's book, okay? So, you know, you have to ask the question, well, damn, what, what's so controversial about that? I mean, Dr. Cornell West is country. I mean, Dr. Cornell West? I mean, he's controversial. Dr. Henry Lewis skipped the truth gates? You know, they're controversial. So I, I looked at the, um, the, the article from... Uh, I think it's the one from the Chicago Tribune. And we'll post a link here of the article from the Chicago Tribune here for you. How's everybody doing? So this is this is deeper than just the article from blackamericaweb.com. That was basically a one-page article, okay? Well, when I dug deep into this, it's, it's, it's much more complicated than that. So I, I, I looked at um, the article from... Uh, Illinois, let's see, W-I-L-L dot Illinois dot E-D-U. 
they have a list of a lot of the books that were banned, if not a complete list. And they they talk about books submitted for clearance that were not allowed to be brought into the facility for consideration November of 2018. I talked about this earlier. We see the color of law, a forgotten history of how our government segregated America. Looking up our looking up, locking up our own crime and punishment in Black America by James Foreman Jr. How to kill a city, gentrification, inequality, and the fight for the neighborhood by Peter Moskowitz. Now these are um, books that were not allowed to be even brought into the facility for review. Okay, November two thousand eighteen, and then. Also, you have a book by Patrick Shark, uh, Sharkey, Uneasy Peace, The Great Crime Decline, The Renewal of City Life and the, and the Next War on Violence. So then you have books submitted for clearance that were allowed to be brought into the facility for consideration, but were ultimately denied clearance. So, so these are books that were, these are books that were allowed to come into the facility to be reviewed, but they were ultimately denied uh, clearance, okay, saying you can't use these in the program. Narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. Now, if you can't use an autobiography from Frederick Douglass, I, I guess they wanted the autobiography from Clarence Thomas. I guess that'd be permissible. I mean, Frederick Douglass, I mean, uh, uh, what about Harriet, Harriet Tubman's uh, autobiography? Could you use that? Who's Detroit? Politics, labor, and race in modern American in a modern American city by Heather Ann Thompson. That was not allowed. That was not given clearance. Public housing myths, perception, reality, and social policy. Public housing myths, perception, reality, and social policy. Okay. Uh, so when you go through and you look at a lot of these books. You know, it causes you to start asking questions here. Let's let's turn on the screen share here, um, so you can you can see this. You can see this list of some of these books here. Okay, you should be able to see this. All right, and then uh, let's see, Souls of Black Folks by W. B. Du Bois, Incidents of a Slave Girl, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Okay, they were denied clearance. Why the Government is the Problem by Milton Friedman. The Little Book of Victim Offender Conferencing, okay? Now, books denied clearance in previous years, books denied clearance in previous years include The Wretched of the Earth by Frantz Fanon, Black Skin, White Mask, Frantz Fanon, Eyes on the Prize, America's Civil Rights Years, 1954 to 1965 by Juan Williams and Julian Bond. You were not allowed, you, you, the, the book, uh, so, you know, we, we, most of us have seen the documentary series on PBS, Eyes on the Prize, okay? But there's a companion book to that. So you were not allow this book from Juan Williams and Julian Bond, Eyes on the Prize, that talked about Dr. King and, and Rosa Parks, you wouldn't allow this into the prison? Um, so then you have materials allowed into the facility in February 2019 on condition certain pages were removed. Now, Rebecca Ginsburg said, we never had a situation where we had to tear pages out of a book. All right. Uh, urban crisis and black politics. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, in, a, in against the current, uh, let's see, 50, okay, I guess it came out 1995. And uh, they have 54 here, I guess it's page 54. Charlotte Brooks, Los Angeles, America's White Spot. In Alien Neighbor, in, in Alien Neighbors, Foreign Friends, Asian Americans, Housing and the Transformation of Urban America. Um, education policy as an act of white supremacy, 
whiteness, critical race theory, and education reform. So removed from the Education Justice Project Library at the Danville Correctional Facility in January 2019 were, they give a, they give a list of all these books here. I'm not gonna go through this whole list. There's about 200 of them. We'll just go through some highlights. Um, there was some I was looking at here. Let's see here. Race Matters by Cornell West. Uh, Black Students, Middle Class Teachers, Dr. Jawanza Kajufu. You can't have Dr. Kajufu in the prison? Black Students, Middle Class Teachers. I wonder what's in that book so controversial they don't want prisoners to have it. Uncivil Rights, Uncivil Rights, Teachers, Unions, and Race in the Battle for School Equity, Joanna Perillo, okay? Bad Boys. Public Schools in the Making of Blast ma Black Masculinity, Anne Arnett, okay? A Anne Arnett Ferguson. Uh, let's see here. There's some other ones that I saw. Oh, Basil Davison. Basil Davison is a white historian that writes that wrote books on African history. The Black Man's Burden, Africa and the Curse of the Nation State by Basil Davison. David uh, uh, Rodiger or Rodiger, how race survived U.S. history from settlement and slavery to the Obama phenomenon. How race survived U.S. history from settlement and slavery to the Obama phenomenon. Uh, let's see. Oh, Gerald Horn. Gerald Horn is a brilliant historian. Uh, uh, he's in 1804, the Hidden History of Haiti documentary from director to Tariq Nasheed. He's been interviewed by Roland Martin a number of times. I, I, I met him here uh, when he was speaking at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Uh, Dr. Gerald Horn is a brilliant historian. Fire This Time, the Watts Uprising and the 1960s. Dr. Gerald Horn has written a number of, of, of history books. Okay. But these are some of the books that were. Uh, that, that were banned. Black Feminist Thought, Knowledge, Consciousness, and the Politics of Empowerment by Patricia Hill Collins. Let me just give you a few more uh, books here. Colored People, a memoir by Dr. Henry Louis Gates Jr. Uh, let's see. But this is a long list of books that they uh, banned. Mumia, Mumia Abu-Jamal, Mark Lamont Hill, The Classroom and the Cell, Conversations on Black Life in America. Henry Louis Gates Jr., America Behind the Color Line, Dialogues with African Americans. Ishmael Reed, Another Day at the Front, uh, Dispatches from the Race War. Lerone Bennett Jr., Before the Mayflower, uh, A History of Black America. They won't let Lerone be, this book is used in schools across the country. Lerone Bennett Jr., Before the Mayflower. They won't allow this book in the prison? I wonder why. This is a powerful book right here. I use this in my online course. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Maafa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, What They Didn't Teach You in School. When we deal with the, the portion dealing with the, actually the transatlantic slave trade and in this country and the the um, origins of the 13 colonies. Chapter two is crucial, okay? Because slave laws didn't exist in the 13 colonies in 1619. This is what a lot of people don't know. Now, now more people found this out because, uh, we, because of the commemoration of uh, August 20th, 1619, okay? In the, in the 1619 project with New York Times, the interviews that I've done, information I put out, um, more people know now that in 1619, you didn't have slave laws in any of the 13 colonies. The first colony to have uh, slave laws, codified slave laws, is going to be Massachusetts in 1641. They don't come to uh, Virginia until 1661, okay? So 
if you have this book before before the Mayfly by Lerone Bennett Jr., okay, and how you doing, Sis Ray Lay, Kim King, Greg, uh, Eric, if you have this book, pull it out and turn to, in the back, turn to uh, Milestones, what is it called, Mile, Milestones in History, okay? This is the sixth edition. I'm not sure if this is the most recent edition, I have to check, because I have to get a new copy because mine is falling apart. But December 1641, December 1641, landmarks and milestones, okay? It tells you Massachusetts became the first colony to give statutory recognition to slavery. It, it didn't exist before then, okay? Codified slave laws didn't, in 1619, those 20 and odd Africans are going to be put into a form of indentured servitude and they're gonna be released after three to five years. Other colonies followed, Connecticut in 1650, Virginia 1661, Maryland 1663, New York and New Jersey 1664, South Carolina 1682, Rhode Island and Pennsylvania 1700, North Carolina 1750, Georgia, sorry, North Carolina 1715, Georgia 1750. Okay, see, see, many of us are under the mis misconception that in the 13 colonies, slavery was already developed when those 29 Africans came in and all the colonies had all the same laws and things like that. No, that's not the case at all. The, the whole way this, this evolves is totally different than what we actually think. Okay, this is why, this is why we have to study the history. Okay, all right. How's everybody doing? Um, if you like this type of information, be sure to register for the online course that I teach, Ancient Kemet, which is one of the original names for Egypt. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'apa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. Okay, this is a, uh, a eight weeks, really gonna be nine weeks. 16-hour uh, online course that I teach dealing with thousands of years of history. And uh, you know, I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles. We deal with archaeological discoveries. We deal with this information chronologically as much as possible. And we deal with the 800-year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors. We deal with the African presence in this land we call the U.S. going back tens of thousands of years, even before Native Americans come into existence. Okay, so we just posted the link here. It's also on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. It's regularly $130. It's on sale $80. As soon as you register, you can watch classes one and two, and then there's about 36 hours of bonus content. So this section, uh, we meet on Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's online at our online school. We meet live. You can do the live chat in the class, ask questions, follow along. If you miss anything, not a problem. All the sessions are archived. All the sessions are recorded. You can go back and watch it over and over again, watch from around the world, okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Stephanie said, yeah, we can start a book club for some of these. Yeah, you can start uh, st start book clubs, uh, study groups, not just a book club. Now, it's not it's not the book of the month club. You sit around and eat cookies and drink tea. We need study groups to study this information and then implement it. And then the study groups can be connected to the black homeschooling groups. OK, and you can still do you can still homeschool your children, even if they go to a traditional school. You can homeschool in the evening, homeschool on the weekend, definitely homeschool during the summer because that two and a half months that our children are out of school during the summer, their skills erode. And you talk to any teacher, they'll tell you usually they have to spend a month, three weeks to a month, getting the students back to the level they were when they left school when they come back that first month from summer vacation. Okay, so during summer we need to have reading book lists for our students for 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 our children uh you should take them to the library because see my mother used to take uh my brother and i to the library every week we had to check out a book read it write a book report on it. that's what i had to do during the summer okay one of the things i had to do during the summer so we we, we have to we have to uh understand this and also some of our children can go to summer school during the summer to get ahead as well 
okay, get ahead on the on the school year. But they, we should be reading books, taking them to the library, taking them to museums, keeping them mentally engaged. All right. Okay. So uh, let's continue here. And also, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Uh, we have Hidden Colors 5 at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, Hidden Colors 5, The Art of Black Warfare. Uh, just came out on August uh, 12th, 2019. For each copy you purchase of uh, uh, from the African History Network, you'll get three of my DVD, uh, you get three of my lectures on digital download, okay? Three of my uh, latest presentations on digital download. And uh, we'll post the link here. And that's also at uh, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, right on the home page. That also includes um, the, the three digital downloads you get free of, of mine. It includes six principles of political self-defense, okay, because I did that presentation July 21st, 2019 at the Black Homeschooling Conference in Atlanta. If you're interested in uh, learning about homeschooling, uh, African American children from an African centered perspective. Visit liberatedmindsexpo.com, liberatedmindsexpo.com. Okay, that's the official website of the um, uh, Liberated Minds Black Homeschool and Education Expo. That's where I am. Uh, the expo takes place the third weekend in July in Atlanta each year. So that's where I am each year because I'm one of the presenters there also and one of the vendors. Okay. African American business owners, email us at customer service at African History Network. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Okay. If you're interested, if you're interested in learning about the stock market, learning about day trading, the foreign exchange market, well, the profit room can help you. Okay. The profitroom.com is a stock market uh, trading and education company that has mentorship programs that are designed for beginners. They teach individuals how to create generational wealth through trading and investing in the financial markets. You can learn about stocks, options, futures, foreign exchange market. Their uh, specialty is day trading. Visit their website, theprofitroom.com, theprofitroom.com for more information. They can get you started today. Okay, uh, so let's continue with this article here from... Uh, Chicago Tribune. Chicago Tribune has a really extensive article. I went through, read it a couple of times here. All right. So the decision was made after. Um, so the the records show that those who run the Equal Justice uh, Project program, uh, Equal Justice Project program, and other University of Illinois officials, then spent the next several months seeking answers about the book's removal attempting to have them return to the EJP and then be allowed to bring them back into the prison for use in their classrooms. In late June 2019, another review by prison officials, after another review by prison officials, the books were returned to the prison, uh, Illinois Department of correction documents show, okay? So in late June, June 2019, after another review by prison officials, the books were returned to the prison. That decision was made after media inquiries about the controversy. In a statement released to the Chicago Tribune and other media outlets the same month, okay, June of 2019, a spokesperson would only say that the books had not followed a review process. The materials removed, the statement said, quote, had entered Danville, Danville Correctional Facility, without being appropriately, re appropriately reviewed, end quote. The statement did not mention that department officers were directed to find course materials that were, quote, unquote, controversial, controversial, or that what they chose to remove dealt largely with race, okay? So the statement did not mention that the department officers were directed to find course materials that were controversial or that what they chose to remove dealt largely with race. But in addition to the references in the uh, IDOC documents, in the IDOC documents, 
to the racial nature of some of the material. Rebecca Ginsburg, director of the, uh, of the uh, Educational Justice Project, testified in front of lawmakers that one prison official called the books, quote unquote, divisive, and that another official, in explaining why the books were problematic, told one of her EJP colleagues, quote, it's the racial stuff, end quote. Now, it's not clear whether any other criteria were given to correctional officers when they removed the books. A spokesperson declined to answer questions about the removal or the discrepancy between uh, her initial statements and records released by the agency. Though the university program itself was reinstated at the end of January 2019, about three weeks after it was suspended, the books that were removed were not available for the program to use. Now, Alan Mills, director of the Uptown People's Law Center, Okay, Alan Mills, director of the Uptown People's Law Center, also testified at the July 2019 hearing, saying it's unclear why, quote unquote, divisive material should be of note. It's unclear why, the, why divisive material should be of note. He said that because the term is subjective, it would not meet the criteria for censorship established in a U.S. Supreme Court precedent. Because this is the question, who gets to determine what's controversial and based upon what standard? Who gets to determine what's divisive? Based upon what standard, based upon what definition? Now, at the July hearing, lawmakers said they didn't want to have to use legislation to fix the problem, okay? Instead, hoping the new director can implement a policy that would, that would allow inmates access to education without disruptions like this, all right? Now, State Representative Carol Amons, okay, who's the chair of the House Higher Education Committee said, quote, the hearing really made it clear that we want the state of Illinois to have a clear and fair statewide policy that allows incarcerated students to pursue their education and their studies free from undue interference. Okay, now Rob Jeffries, the acting uh, chief of the IDOC, Illinois Department of Corrections, told lawmakers the department will, quote, work through, end quote, the issue. Okay. He said, while I've only been on this job a couple of weeks, I can assure you this, I am committing to ensuring that, that rehabilitation programming is available to all men and women in our care. I believe expanding educational and vocational opportunities is a key to breaking the cycle of incarceration for thousands of Illinois uh, families, he said, okay? He went on to say, quote, it, it's not up. It, it's not us against the programs. That program is part of our fabric of how we run facilities. Programs are our number one security application because if you keep folks busy, if you keep them programmed, challenge their thinking to change their behavior, it makes for a better run facility. All right. So now that is the uh, so that's an article by uh, Peter uh, Nikias, N-I-C-K-E-A-S. For Chicago Tribune. OK, so this is an extensive article to give you some background information on uh, this issue. All right. So I so I also read the article from. Um, W.I.L.L. Uh, dot Illinois EDU. OK. Also read this article, and this gave some uh, some some very very interesting information on this, some background information also. Okay, so they talked about some of the other titles that were removed. Okay, 
Um, those titles include books like uh, Visiting Day, a children's book about visiting a parent. Okay, so they talk about up from slavery and things like this, all right. Now, a majority of the books removed from the, from the program's library are about race. Outgoing Illinois Department of Corrections Director, uh, uh, Illinois Department of Corrections Director John Baldwin, he's the outgoing director, okay? Rob Jeffries is the incoming director. John Baldwin is the outgoing Illinois Department of Corrections Director. He said he learned about the book removal after a University of Illinois administrator called him to ask about it. He said he received an explanation from the Danville prison warden, all right? He said, quote, somehow a lot of books got into the institution without going through our review process. That was our fault, John Baldwin said. Quote, we let, we let uh, books in and some of them maybe should not have been. Some of them are very good books, okay? Now, multiple emails obtained by Illinois newsroom show that at least a portion of the books that were removed were approved by prison staff to the entire facility, all right? At least a portion of the books that were removed were approved by prison staff to enter, I'm sorry, to enter the facility, okay? The remove and see once again, there's a difference between books approved to enter the facility for review and books actually approved to be used in the program. Now, the removed books also came into the prison at different times and in different years and were brought in with other books that were not removed from the EJP library by prison officials earlier uh, this year. Uh, there's a couple of parts I had uh, marked, a couple of notes I made here. So before the books were removed, Holly Klingen, who uh, works with the Equal Justice Project, before the books were removed, Ho Holly Klingen said the collection included about 4,000 titles spread across two rooms. Rebecca Ginsburg said the rooms, quote, look like no other rooms inside the prison, end quote. The walls are painted shades of blue and green. There are plants and posters on the wall, some depicting EJP students giving presentations, she said. I'm skipping over some of this that's redundant. Okay. Censorship restrictions nationwide. Censorship restrictions nationwide. Now, Illinois is not the only state uh, to place restrictions on how or what prisons can read, prisoners can read. State prison systems in Washington, the state of Washington, Maryland, and Pennsylvania recently played restriction, recently placed restrictions on book donations and prison officials in all three states reversed these policies after public outcry, okay? State officials uh, said they were concerned about illicit substances, substances entering prisons on the pages of donated books. Now, the Arizona Department of Corrections, you may have heard about this. We posted an article about this as well a few months ago. The Arizona uh, Department of Corrections recently banned a book by former federal prosecutor and Georgetown law professor Paul Butler, who you see on MSNBC often, okay? The Arizona Department of Corrections recently banned a book by a former federal prosecutor that focuses on racism in the criminal justice system. The department argued that the book posed a threat to security in the prison. How, how does the book pose a threat to security in the prison? How, how does it do that? Are you afraid that they, uh, uh, are, are you afraid that the book may change the way prisoners look at the prison guards or maybe prison guards who mistreat them? 
possibly, I'm not saying all prison guards do that, but some of them do, we know this. Now, when asked what would constitute inappropriate content, John Baldwin, the outgoing director of the uh, Illinois uh, Department of Corrections, John Baldwin uh, referred Illinois' uh, newsroom to the agency's publication review policy, the agency's publication review policy. The policy states that material that is sexually explicit or otherwise obscene facilitates communication between uh, offenders, encourages hatred, violence, or other criminal activities, or is otherwise detrimental to security, good order, of the facility may be disapproved, all right? So this is the standards that they're looking at. Now, Michael Tafo Tafola, Michael Tafola is uh, a prisoner who participated in the EJP program during the last four years of a, uh, and he's, uh, dealing with he's dealing with a two decade long prison sentence okay now both rebecca ginsburg who's the director of the ejp and michael tafola believe race however is at the root of the book removal in danville all right now michael tafola tafola, uh, tafola grew up in chicago and was sent to prison on a murder conviction when he was 18 years old Tafola was released from prison last year. Okay. Now, he said that he said books never caused riots or fights at prison or in prison. Books never caused riots or fights in prison. Instead, he said the books he read in the Educational Justice Project classes and on his own led to greater self awareness and helped him reject a life of violence and crime. It led to greater self-awareness and it led to um, and it helped him uh, reject a life of violence and crime, right? He said, quote, prisons are filled by mostly black and brown people. These books seem to be empowerment for not only black and brown, but directed towards black and brown, learning their history, learning who they are, giving them self-identity, self-worth and awareness of what their people, their generations have been through, end quote. Now this is a former prisoner who went through this EJP program and he's talking about the impact that the books and the program had on him. Now, Michael Tafola, said that uh, he said that's what books look uh look like that he said that's what books like these did for him they helped him understand how he wound up in the cycle of mass incarceration but he said he thinks there's a reason prison staff don't want incarcerated men reading empowering material he said quote if people like me that come from poverty stricken neighborhoods, learn how to be much more and value ourselves. We're going to be less likely to be breaking the law or doing other at risk things. If that happens, then less people are going to go to prison. Less people go to prison, that means there's going to be less prisons. That means that a lot of people are going to be out of jobs in the future. Because there's roughly about a million jobs tied to um, incarceration, tied around that. There's about a million jobs or so. Now, Michael Tafola is now a case manager for the Chicago based Precious Blood Ministry of Reconciliation. Precious Blood Ministry of Reconciliation. He works with at-risk youth, uh, uh, young adults, ages 18 to 28 years old, uh, to mitigate violence and help them 
uh, heal past trauma. All right, so let's continue. Okay, so uh, Rebecca Ginsburg and other advocates and, and, and other advocates for expanded access to education inside Illinois prisons plan to launch an advocacy effort dubbed the Freedom to Learn campaign, the Freedom to Learn campaign, okay? Now, among other things, the group is asking state lawmakers for increased transparency and fairness for book approval policies in state prisons. They want procedures and criteria that protect against arbitrary and capricious acts of censorship in addition to an appeals process, okay? Now, State Representative uh, Carol Amons, A-M-M-O-N-S, Said, and she's a Democrat, she said she was disconcerted when Rebecca Ginsburg showed her the list of removed books. State Representative Carol Amons said, quote, I said, are they removing all black books? I was totally taken aback by the list of books and what their objection is to the books. Reading about the history of slavery, post-emancipation, and the black experience in the United States, quote, is an important part of developing an African-American person that is whole in society. So if you take that away from them, you have, in essence, denied their very nature, their humanity. You can't tell them that they don't deserve to know what happened to them. This is State Representative Carol Amos saying this. Okay, now this summer, 2019, State Representative Carol Amons said she plans to make other state lawmakers aware of what's happened to the program at the Danville Correctional uh, Facility. Uh, okay, she said, uh, she said she's committed to making sure something like this does not happen again and also finding out why it occurred in the first place. He said, we've not learned, obviously, in any real concrete way why this has happened, why this has happened. And until we get to the root cause, I can't propose the actual solution. Until we get to the root cause, I can't propose the actual solution. Now, so Rebecca Ginsburg, who's the director of the EJP, says she worries that if the prison system can do this to the EJP, which is a decade old college and prison program hosted by the largest public university in Illinois, which so is the University of Illinois. She said if they can do that to the EJP, it can happen to other groups offering higher education coursework to incarcerated men and women. Okay. She said, quote, and in speaking to my other colleagues across the country about this situation, I have not yet come across a single example where anything like this has happened in a prison in the United States in the past decade, okay? She said, in speaking to my other colleagues across the country about what happened at the Danville Correctional Facility, she said, I have not yet come across a single example where anything like this has happened in a prison in the United States in the past decade. She said, this is extraordinary and it was not an accident. And I think we need an explanation for what happened, okay? All right, so check out this article as well. This is from um, will.illinois.edu, okay? Illinois prison removes more than 200 books from prison library. Illinois prison removes more than 200 books from prison library. All right, how you doing, Tracy, David, 
uh, Sharifa, how's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on your Facebook page. If you like this type of information, uh, you can donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, uh, or at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. If you want to donate 10, 15, 25, 50, 100, et cetera, that uh, helps support the African History Network, helps us keep doing the research. Stay on the air broadcast, the uh, Sunday night shows. Uh, helps cover expenses when I have to travel also. And if you want to set up for a recurring donation, you can do that as well. Okay. And then uh, Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Uh, to basically 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I teach my online course, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. So this is a... Uh, Eight week, 16 hour online course. We do with thousands of years of history. We do with what led to the transatlantic slave trade happening because that the, the transatlantic slave trade is really Europeans getting revenge on the African Moors, what the Moors for what the Moors introduced into Europe, but also Moors are intermixing with the European population and, and white Moors, uh, I mean, African American African Moors are intermixing with white women as well. Okay, so. We deal with a chronology of history and we deal with the African presence in this country going back tens of thousands of years ago. And uh, I reference uh, Dr. David M. Hotep's book, The First Americans Were Africans Documented Evidence. This book right here, The First Americans Were Africans Documented Evidence. So his book has 713 footnotes, deals with um, the African presence in this country going back tens of thousands of years. Okay, so you can, and then we do with what leads to the transatlantic slave trade happening also. But the the transatlantic slave trade was really Europeans getting revenge on Africans for what uh, happened in uh, Europe. Okay, and hostility builds up against these African Moors, etc. Okay, so check that out. Register for the online course. Okay, how's everybody doing? Okay, uh, Sharifa. Okay. Cook County, Illinois says drop marijuana related offenses. All right. Okay, so how you all like this type of information? All right, so look, uh, let's see here we have here, v uh, Velma, okay. So this is a very interesting uh, story here, and it's not as cut and dry as uh, it originally appeared. It does it does appear to targeting African American books, books dealing with race, things like this. But there's some other things going on also. Okay, look, we're going to get out of here. Uh, be sure to follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, uh, and follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, on YouTube. Um, you can order uh, Hidden Colors 5. You can order my DVD lectures. They're all available at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. Okay, so look, we're going to get out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to watch the videos at our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct for our own behavior. Uh, it's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. And we'll talk to you next time. Peace.